Hey guys, this is Post Editing Adam. I just finished for the fifth time listening to an over two hour private one on one podcast with me and Istabrak. And to give you a little background, I first had a chance to to work with a little bit more closely uh, Istabrak, a fellow artist and YouTuber and art teacher like myself. Um, when I hosted the AI art podcast with, with Istbrek and a bunch of other remarkable artists that I care very deeply about. And one thing really, really stuck out to me about Istbrek was, wasn't only her, her incredible wisdom and contribution to the conversation, but her compassion, her incredible warm heart that she just made everybody, myself especially, feel incredibly welcomed and we she shared with everybody a sense of belonging which was remarkable because this is my podcast i was hosting it but i just stood back and and let her do her work because she's just so gifted at that i knew from that day forward i wanted to have a private one-on-one podcast with her which is what you're going to be able to enjoy today as much as i've enjoyed it and what i hope you listen to and what i hope you walk away with is witnessing the flourishing of two genuine friends that really care about each other a lot. And she's come to be, through listening to her or creeping in on her uh, bi-weekly um, live streams that she does on her channel all the time. I'll leave all the links below. Uh, and just listening to everybody laughing and having a good time and sharing personal stories and all of the things that we're going to share today in this podcast uh, that you're going to listen to that these are two people that really like each other a lot and get along a lot. And what you might not know, uh, and I don't want to make this intro too long-winded because I'm good at that, um, is that there are certain areas where I kind of cut myself, where there's little edits and I tried to make it as clean as possible. And what I edited out a lot weren't the bulk of the dialogue. Most of our conversation is there. But it's times when I realized over and over again, I kept saying, yeah, um, yeah i kept saying that every time she would finish explaining something or describing something and i realized why i kept doing that it's not because i was at a loss for words it's because she stole the words out of my mouth (laughs) she would say so things that that hit home and felt so much like they could have come out of my own mouth that i couldn't possibly say it any better than her so yeah i want you to fall knee deep in love with her as a person and as an artist and without further ado enjoy Istbrek hey, hello since i'm posting this on my channel i want you i want everybody mm-hmm. to know that that being able to have this one-on-one chat with you on my <laughs> channel is is that one of the biggest highlights of my channel I'm being honest with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm honored. Well, you should be. You should be. Uh, Honest to goodness, tell a lot of people on my channel that that I binge on on Vati Vidya when I'm painting, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's not entirely true. I binge on Vati Vidya and I'm watching your live streams, whether you know it or not. I'm always listening (laughs) to your live streams. That's awesome. (laughs) So I thought, I thought, uh, you were asking me before, before we got on on call, you were asking if I had any Mm -hmm. planned questions or anything like that. Mm -hmm. No, I'm a shit host, mm-hmm. and I apologize for that. <laughs> but I do have a question for you. And this is a yeah. question that's actually more personal than you might think. And okay. that question is, why do you paint faces so much? What's your obsession with faces? And why have you, why, why have you made it a life's goal to date uh-huh. so far to master the human face? What's up with that? Okay, okay, good question. Um, so I think the turn into just um being like a portrait specialist i think it happened maybe around 2016 2017. Um, i had been exploring environments i had been exploring gesture sketches and perfecting figure drawings and i had been trying to do a little bit of everything Mm -hmm. Um, and i think that's where a lot of my experience with these fields why i can critique them is because i explored them and explored them as a noob which is where i gathered the most information um and so one day i think i after doing so many like different varieties 
I did a portrait and I was like, the most difficult part of this whole painting was the portrait mm -hmm. and um, I just didn't like that. I didn't like that I found it so difficult. So I did a study, I started doing portrait studies and then I again found it extremely difficult. I was like, environments that aren't that difficult, they actually just fall right into place. It's really just uh, Legos, it feels like, when painting environments or map paintings mm -hmm. or anything like that. Figure drawings are easy because the human body is predictable as a subject. <laughs> um, but then again, I go into portraits and it's just madness. I, I could not figure out why I was having such a difficult time. And I think that curiosity about my failures, my consistent failures, kept me there and it kept me curious. And I think that's what the... Um, appeal is for me with portraits is that I'm never really as good as I think I am at portraits and I just keep pushing and I discover more and more and more form is revealed to me in the human face than any other subject hmm. and it focusing on the portrait I think made me a better teacher because I realized that if I want to be good at teaching I have to have faith in the fundamentals as much as I demand my students to mm -hmm. and I wasn't having faith in them every time I painted a portrait I had a different way of going about it I'd stumble into the core shadow think it looks okay I wouldn't know how to focus detail I'd hack away at it until it looked okay instead of having a method and so I, it was, I felt like a scientist kind of exploring form and gathering information and just consistently being a student form and i think portraits are fun because they're not just about the ways the human face and the variety um the opportunities for form that are there mm -hmm. but there's expression and personality and emotional um signals in the portrait that i feel like i practice even when speaking to people um so Studying the portrait helped me learn a lot about form, but it also it allowed me to create people, uh, I think. Yeah. And so I felt like I was really I was really at the cutting edge of I mean, for some people, the portraits are boring. But for me, I feel like they're so they're always providing some kind of interesting little adventure. And I don't think I'm ever going to stop being curious about the human face. I think it's so intriguing. Huh. It's crazy that you're saying that. And it's funny how you interpret it, mm -hmm. how you interpret drawing faces as this mm -hmm. challenge, as this eternal challenge. Mm -hmm. And well, for starters, it is arguably one of the most challenging topics in yeah. our period. And I think it's because, well, if you think about it, like a newborn child, we're, we're, we're born into being able to recognize faces instantly. They even see yeah. that newborn children who can't see it who are mm -hmm. still blind to a certain degree, they can only see blurs, uh, can can respond to facial expressions, even in their, their fuzziest form. So it's wow. something that's very programmed into our psychology. And mm -hmm. faces are, and I have a very personal relationship with faces too, which is why I asked mm -hmm. in the first place, not only for mm -hmm. me, but my upbringing as well. But um, it's, it's the most humanizing element in... Yeah on the human body right as you said that the body itself is anatomy its form its proportion it's it it has a predictability to it mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily communicate a soul it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. communicate what's inside beautifully put absolutely yeah. yes and when i look at your paintings when i when i look at your paintings it's dozens and dozens and dozens of paintings of faces and it hits home for me for for so many different reasons, because for starters, um, I come from my background. My mother was, mm -hmm. well, is a fine artist. She ended up taking yeah. different routes in life and stuff like that. But um, I have shared it on my channel a couple of times where she did an entire, she'd spent years doing this entire series of non-expressive face on straight on shoulder and face portraits. She had an entire mm -hmm. gallery collection full of just these portraits. And the only thing she was trying to capture differently from one to the next was she was trying to capture soul to, mm -hmm. for lack of a better way of describing it. Now she explained this to me, this is kind of what her goal was. And she had dozens of these, she had sold many, many, many of them, but you'd look at these paintings and if you just look at it at face value, excuse the pun, mm -hmm. but if you look at it at <laughs> face value, 
It's just it's just a woman's face looking at you. That's it. Yeah. And the proportions from one woman to the next were pretty much similar. In your particular case, you're capturing a lot of different appearances, a lot of different types of faces. In her case, they were very kind of the classic oval face looking at you straight on. And I remember distinctly, I've shared this story with, with a lot of my students too, that um, I remember taking it for granted most of my life. She had them hanging on, some of them were hanging on the walls, most of them were sold. And she, I remember one in particular, she had hung, hang, uh, hanging mm -hmm. in the staircase, at the bottom of the staircase. And we were supposed to go out somewhere. I was probably around 17 or 18 years old at the time. I was pretty young. And just sitting there, I had my coat on and I was just waiting for her. She was getting ready. And it was the first time my entire life, after having passed by this painting mm -hmm. thousands of times, up and down the stairs every day, right? that I stopped and I stared at it because I had extra time to stare at it. I was just bored and waiting. So I was just sitting yeah. there and I was staring at the painting and I kept staring and I kept staring and I kept staring mm -hmm. and then I stopped and I went, huh. And my mother saw, she didn't interrupt me. She was, she had already gotten ready, but she says, what is it? And I looked at her for the first time after looking at that painting for, for a decade at least. And I looked at her and I said, She's a prostitute, isn't she? And oh, I went, wow. Bingo. Yeah. You got it. And I went, son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. And she had, I can't describe how she caught, how she captured it. She just, it was through the eyes, it was through the colors, it was through the depths of the eyes, it was through mm -hmm. the skin tones, it was through, I can't describe it, but that was yeah. her gift. It was her, her ability to capture soul in very much the same way that if you've ever studied Modigliani's work, if you look at Modigliani's mm -hmm. figures, they're if you look at them on the surface, they're kind of sh they look like shitty drawings, right? Mm -hmm. They look kind of weird mm -hmm. and funny shaped. But mm -hmm. pay attention to the emotion behind that face, the feeling behind it, the sadness, the eroticism, whatever it is you're looking at, right? There's this human energy that's coming out of those paintings. And Istabrak, I feel mm -hmm. that coming from your paintings. When yeah, I look at your paintings, yeah. I see I'm not just looking at a portrait of a face. I look at somebody who's and I really mean this. I'm not this isn't just empty flattery. I really mean this. Mm -hmm. I see somebody mm -hmm. who's mastering the human soul. Thank right? you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's really remarkable to look at. And the fact that you're a teacher on top of it kind of kind of it, it puts the cherry on top. For me, it's kind of like uh, an artist of your quality who who dedicates herself to really giving all of that knowledge away to her audience and to the people who listen to her and doesn't hoard that information to herself as a secret recipe mm -hmm. is rare. It's very Thank rare. You. Thank yeah. you so much. Absolutely. Um, I think that the, the point, like if I were to say how I um, or what I try to do to infuse a person and with all the brushstrokes, I think it comes from um, the way I look at people. So I, I have like mm. this, um, when I speak to someone, I try to look for, you know, the reaction, um, which may come from social anxiety or anxiety in general or empathy. Yeah. Cause I think I know my empathy is on overdrive a lot of the time. So I focus mm. way more on how that person might be feeling while I'm speaking to them than actually getting my point across. Mm -hmm. So I noticed I did that and I'm kind of trying to work on that, but I try to put an expression that I feel like someone doesn't know they're, they're doing, um, but it's coming through. Mm -hmm. um, so expression that isn't outward, that isn't like obtuse, expression that's sort of full of secrets. Um, I also never really leave a muscle in the face that hasn't been moved even just a little bit, a squint mm -hmm. in the eyes, the inner eyebrow moving just a little bit, definitely focus in the iris like trying to make sure those eyes look like they're interacting with something the mm. viewer someone behind over a shoulder anything like that um just using the functions of the face trying to get them to act and move whether or not um you know everyone will feel a soul in there uh, who knows but they definitely will feel like this is like a functional at least on the anatomical level um then there's uh the a little bit in the cheek, sometimes a smile, sometimes no smile. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's like a half expression. I think people are at the most when they're trying to hide who they are. I think that's just something so distinctly human. Um, just trying uh, their best to uh, be 
you know, proper or trying to hide their expression or there's always something we're keeping behind when we're talking to people or withholding uh, for our own private inner monologue. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's something that I try to do when I'm painting a portrait. I never really paint a full on smile or a full on frown, Mm -hmm. just someone who's experiencing the world around them, but not yet fully reacting to it. Um, But yeah, if, if anybody wants to start doing that in their work, it just comes from remembering that you're not just painting an eye, you're painting like a functional mechanism. Mm-hmm. Um, so engage that, even if you don't want to go for those half expressions that I do. Um, even if you just are painting like a simple character or a girl with like a simple smile or a man with sternness, but sensitivity behind his eyes, it's just as simple as squinting the eyes or as simple as um, uh, having like a more of a content eyebrow on one side but the other eyebrow has a frown um mixing expressions like that it's as simple as doing stuff like that yeah it's i have a curiosity though you said i Mm -hmm. i don't i don't do full-on smiles Mm -hmm. you like to keep it you like to keep the dialogue internal Mm -hmm. why i'm curious um uh (laughs) <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I have to think about that. I think it's because I, I think every time that we smile with like a, you know, like a full on smile, it's um, it's got a lot to do with just being fully happy. And I don't think I'm fully happy when I'm painting. <laughs> Hmm. Um, so usually the characters, you know, if I'm painting a particular like expression on like a sketch or something, um, I'll start doing that with my face, you know, I'll squish my face as I'm painting yeah. like a silly character on stream or one of those, you tell me what to sketch streams that I do. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make the face, but when I'm painting those like long term, six, seven hours, contemplative, you know, portraits that I do. I tend to do the expression that I'm feeling at the time. Half a hmm. lot of people have said this. I, they discovered it, not me. That some of my portraits have a self-portrait element to them. Um, hmm. So I think it's because I'm genuinely working so hard to make this portrait work that I want an expression that feels like someone I know, not yeah. um, looking back at me while I'm building them, not this you know super happy expression because I don't feel like I can make a connection with a character that's smiling ear to ear um just because it just feels like that's not what I'm feeling and mm-hmm. so again because the portrait is a mirror always for me to, to a level um I want the what I feel maybe come out sometimes I don't even know what I'm feeling and I don't know it until I've drawn it and I'm like oh yeah I did feel like crap that day mm-hmm. and I do generally have that kind of mood in that, that time period of my life I, it makes sense sometimes I have a character fully smiling if fully smiling in my definition, meaning they have a full recognizable smile. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have a character with a half smile. It just depends on what I'm going through in my life, I think. Um, but yeah, they are diaries. They are reflections, self-portrait element in there, but also just me generally trying to be a student and um, make it so that it's a face that everyone can look at. If they want to see a smile, they'll see one in there. If they want to see a frown, they'll pick one up in there. Um, I try to keep it universal and a smile as an emoji. It's that's not so it's not, you it's universal, but it's not universal to every viewer that might look at it. Um, it's more of like a very simple portrait that not everyone, an expression that not everyone can relate to, but like a face that has a bit of everything, everyone can relate to it. Um, mm-hmm. so that's what I feel like as an audience watching my painting unravel, um, is, uh, I feel like that's what I'm doing. I'm being a, an audience member on top of all that other stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at a lot of the faces now that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on your channel, istabrak.com, if I can yeah. take you there. And she's <laughs> got uh, a Patreon as well in a Gumroad. So go check that out. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking at the portraits and I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at it for what it is and just looking at these different faces. Well, for starters, you do far more female faces than men's faces. Yeah, I, which I, would, I think I, is I'm the, the same self-portrait. Way, the <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's the self-portrait aspect of everything, but also just because I'm not, I don't know, women have more to hide in their <laughs> in their face. I feel than then, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just generalizing. Um, but yeah, sorry. Go on, continue. No, 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 not at all. Well, I I tend to draw females much more than males too. I always grew up drawing mm-hmm. females more often. Why I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Maybe yeah. my tattoo artist actually, uh, Julie Hamilton. She had said that. When she was doing the tattoo, she was doing the sleeve on my left arm, right? Yeah. And 
um, she had said to me at one point, um, she said, she goes, I don't get a lot of male clients, she said. She does now, but she said, I don't get a lot of male clients. Most of my clients are females, I guess, because more mm -hmm. women are into the mandala ornamental type art and stuff like that. Right. And, and I said, I said, that's interesting. She, and, mm -hmm. and I said, because I said, my artistic tastes have always, I've always felt that my artistic tastes were much more feminine than masculine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, that makes sense. And she made the she made the comment that, uh, generally speaking, your left side represents your feminine side. She said, mm -hmm. went, really interesting, right? Oh. Just that was kind of yeah. neat. Um, probably totally irrelevant to what we're talking about here. But um, that said, no, very relevant, very relevant. Uh, I feel like maybe because of your mom's influence in your art development. Oh, for sure, yeah. 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 Well, her, her, she was, she's the artist. She was the one who I've grown up having artistic conversations mm -hmm. with, right? And her perspective mm -hmm. and stuff. I didn't really, mm -hmm. honestly, I didn't really start to, um, I didn't really start to, to, um, understand what masculinity was in and of itself, like what being a male means in this, right. on this planet until 11 years ago when I had my son and I, it's the first time that I that I wow. I discovered what loving a male loving a, a male figure meant because I was raised by mm -hmm. a, a woman so for me right. the, the the father son dynamic never existed to me and I had had two daughters prior to having Lucas my son and uh -huh. to me the relationship between parent and child was always a, 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 a the opposite sex right it wasn't it was always my i always understood the the parental child for a female not for a male until right. i had lucas and i basically realized it's exactly the same <laughs> it's exactly yeah. the same and you know and cuddling with your son is is something i'm indulging it as much as i can until well he's oh, reaching or his voice is changing now and he's got a little weird <laughs> mustache going on so you know <laughs> so uh so that's changing right i'm not gonna be able to i'm not gonna be able to do that forever but uh, yeah it's 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 the same thing but i don't know if that's changed my art per se mm -hmm. but what i have noticed what i have noticed is that in the last while i made a discovery about faces and this is why this is alluding back to why i'd asked you about faces mm -hmm. um i grew up my kind of ambition artistically was to be an animator right to be right. a cartoon animator and acting and body language and facial expression and portraiture was everything to me right the right. expression of the human body expression of the human face etc cetera, etc cetera. and then there was a certain period in my artistry where i started to feel like the direction i was going in the direction i was going that fa there was something about faces that was a roadblock for me i couldn't quite describe uh -huh. it and then yeah. i made a couple of really important discoveries and one was watching the jabberwockies dance troupe perform and Jabberwockies, mm -hmm. if you if you look them up, they're a dance troupe that that all wear white masks. They're indistinguishable. Right. Um, so facially, they're nondescript. They all blend into each other. And the second was just being somebody who's a big fan of the Souls series, right? The 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 Dark Souls series and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Where if you look at the at Souls characters and creatures, they're in most part faceless. They hide their face. They wear masks. They're they're in the shadow. They're looking down. The creatures have are nondescript. Even the human characters are very, very nondescript until eventually they start to lose their appearance and start wearing helmets and stuff like that. And there was something that kind of clicked in my head, where mm -hmm. I realized that I had adhered myself so much to facial expressions, and mm -hmm. expressing through the face, that that was actually a plug in my, in my flow so to speak mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you'll notice that the gross majority of my paintings are mm -hmm. are are faceless there's there's no right. faces or they're nondescript faces and what that did I've is it kind that. of unlocked that expression into the rest of the figure and it allowed mm -hmm. me to start expressing humanity through a much more abstract lens right mm -hmm. because well what you do artistically because as I'm saying this, I'm looking at your paintings, is mm -hmm. incredibly intimidating artistically. You have to reach, mm -hmm. you reach a certain point in capturing portraiture and capturing faces that, like you said, it goes beyond 
just it goes beyond just drawing facial features at a certain point you're looking for something more and that's where the artist starts to come out the art of the artist manifests in the the person behind that portrait and the soul mm. behind that portrait and looking at your portraits um if i was to give you a raw interpretation of the faces that i'm looking at yeah. they're young in most they they're almost entirely feminine mm -hmm. I see little to no masculinity in these faces, even in the ones that are a little bit more intense, like the more demonic faces, so to speak, which are really cool too. I really like mm -hmm. that. Um, and wow, there's a whole, if you go on istabrak.com and you're looking through all the different portraits here, I'm going to be honest, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> <laughs> these, these portraits are kind of heavy to me. You know, there's uh -huh. like some of them look really, I don't know. Painful. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to, you know, to pry too deeply or anything like that. But I see a I lot understand. of. There's a lot of, like, I'm looking at young faces that have expressions on their face that have lived through, a lot more weight, than I imagine somebody at those ages might have had to. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm. And when I see the stronger faces, they're usually older. Like like all of the strong faces are older women. They're women who are approaching their 30s or 40s. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of that. That's where they've kind of developed this. This They're more confrontational. They're more looking mm -hmm. at you with a, kind of a judgment. There's a little bit more. They're, they're kind of sizing you up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the younger faces tend to be more vulnerable to me mm -hmm. there's two portraits in particular that i find really powerful if on the second line because they're they're in rows of four on the second mm -hmm. line the second portrait on the on the left the second portrait to the left on the second row mm -hmm. is to me a face that looks really in a lot of pain <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the second row um second row the from left. the top second so if you were to count from left to right top to bottom it would be the sixth portrait a girl looking over to the left Young, oh, right. With dark right. hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see a lot of a lot of weight in those eyes. A lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting sucked <laughs> into this a little bit too much, but I yeah, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna make you feel like I'm kinda of poking poking no. too personally, but no, I mean you do very... put yourself out there, right? So Yeah. 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 I think um I think you're right. I think uh well uh, I don't wanna, you know, like get too deep into my life experiences but i've i've been very open and yeah. kind of an open book as he once described me and i, I really really res it really resonated with me um but yeah i went through a period in the last four or five years i think no i think uh six years where i had like extreme pain chronic pain mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so i was uh i had also um bought my house and I was, it was just a messed up looking house. And so my goal, one of my biggest goals in life was to get an old house and fix it up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was on that and I was fixing it up. And so that happening at the same time as my back finally giving out, um, mm. it was hard. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was right. life changing. Before I bought that house, I had no gray hairs on my head. And I don't know if it's pseudoscience or whatnot, <laughs> but after I have tons of gray hairs on my head. So it was a really, really trying time for me. Mm. So, but I was still painting, um, and whenever I could. And so I, I think you're right. There is some like level of burden, I guess I'm trying to express in my portraits, but I really appreciate that. Um, mm. I think you you really do see things um, at such a deeper level than everybody else, because uh, I don't think anyone's ever said that to me. Um, what they're picking up off my portraits, so I really um, I'm happy that someone you know received the letter and is finally reading my portraits the way I, even maybe I didn't notice um, at first, but obviously when they're all beside each other, you can see a kind of mm -hmm. pattern. Um, about the younger faces being vulnerable and the older faces being a little bit more uh, confrontational, though that I've never, ever, ever heard before, and I, I thought that is new to me and very interesting. It's really, it's really, uh, it's powerful. What can I tell you? It's really Thank powerful you. stuff. Thank you so much. Yeah, but yeah. So you said you you um, you had to deal with chronic back pain, right? Mm -hmm. I think I can mm -hmm. relate to that a little bit. 
I what know, happened? It, what ha Was it an injury or what happened to you? It's an old injury from when I was young. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it kind of just healed itself. Okay. Um, and then finally it just gave up. Um, and I was like 26 or 27. I'm 33 now. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I, it got me through uni. It got me through Holland books mm -hmm. of you know, bags of textbooks and stuff. And I, I didn't feel any pain. And then all of a sudden, that old, old injury came back. Mm -hmm. And my whole life like was drastically changed. Yeah, Everything changed. Everything yeah. changed. It's hard to imagine what life was like before the injury, the things I took for granted. Mm -hmm. And the peace that I had while well, just sitting and watching television. But now you sit and watch television and you are at war with your spine and there's no way to sit and there's no way to sleep completely changed and so all of that like imagine everything that you rely on to move comes from mm -hmm. your spine yeah um and you rely on your spine for every movement i mean so that's essentially what happened is that my foundations were rocked and yeah. Yeah. i didn't have any you know any way of and i, I live in the united states so healthcare here is horrible and mm -hmm. so from imaging to diagnosis it was just a, a very bad turn of events and um, I think I, I you're right I do see a lot of that in my portraits yeah yeah well was it the lower back or what part of your back did you did you hurt um so it, the original injury was upper back it's okay. um yeah the upper back area so your arms while sitting down and drying yeah um oh, it was it was horrible um mm -hmm. but then like a kind of little miracle happened in my life i started lifting at the gym focusing mm -hmm. mostly on my upper back and um that changed everything yeah at one point one whole leg was numb and it was coming from my upper back no um shit. when it when it started getting bad yeah and there was a limp while walking oh man i was 27 so i was like what is going on you know i'm just 27 i should mm -hmm. not be dealing with this but uh then i started lifting around 29 um really taking it seriously and uh yeah the leg numbness went away my back opened up the surrounding muscles supported my back mm -hmm. and i started decompressing and um yeah it was just it was it was i'm really grateful that i discovered that it's so funny because the last thing you want to do is lift weights when your back is just falling apart yeah. but it's it's i did obviously stay away from anything that might cause further damage but it was mostly pulling things down not lifting things up so any downward motions with weights was great for my back so okay. for anyone listening who has upper back pain pull weight down don't pull weight up um, and it opens up your upper thoracic area, which is really difficult to um, open up on a traction machine because it yeah. it's, it's hard for them to open that part of your spine up. Um, so lifting, not you know, pulling things down, opens up that part. Um, so um, pull down machine, anything like that is really great. Yeah, well, I can relate. You know, I've been very, yeah. I was very open about the fact that I've been dealing with lower back conditions since from like, imagine probably from 18 onwards. I think it originally oh, wow. started when I was, yeah, when I, and I didn't realize they were actually disc herniations. I didn't, I just knew mm -hmm. that every once a year mm -hmm. I would get some twinge in my back and then I would be mm -hmm. in terrible pain for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, right? Yeah. And it wasn't until about two, three years ago um, that I had a big injury. I was, I was uh, using the lawnmower and I put the lawnmower handle down. It's always when you're doing something little, it's not when you're yes. lifting up a car, it's always when you're lifting up a, you know, a bottle cap off the ground or something like that. Yeah. And you get that little kind of pinch and you go, shit. And I yes. felt it. And I, I immediately I went, oh crap, here we go again. Well, mm -hmm. little did I know it was going to be two years of chronic yes. back pain. Mm -hmm. And, um, I can completely empathize with you. It's utterly, dis it's it's debilitating. You can't yes. do absolutely anything. Sneezing is a terrifying thing. Oh, God. The whole idea, sneeze. whenever I felt the sneeze coming on, I was like, oh, shit, here we go again. Here because we go. <laughs> you use every muscle in your body to sneeze, basically, right? Yes. And yes. everything. Every It was just, you know, completely, it was, and it's exhausting. And it's, you get, start getting a bit depressed after a certain, God, because oh, you start yeah. to feel, like you said, you know constant pain for that long you start to feel like is this my reality forever and i'm in yeah. my 20s or 30s or 40s right mm -hmm. and um yeah so it was absolutely terrible but like you i i learned to respect the human body mm -hmm. dearly and not to take mm -hmm. it for granted and and i also learned like you you need to move to heal 
-hmm. your body is smart it you it does yes. what you tell it to do and if you if you sit on your ass all day and draw all day and you're not moving you're getting weak you're you're breeding discrepancies in your in your musculoskeletal system that are mm -hmm. going to compound over time mm -hmm. to cause chronic problems right and yep. This is just something I took for granted for years and years and years. And then Mother Nature says, uh, 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 no, 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 Adam, here you go. Here's pain. And pain is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. It teaches you oh, to yeah. smarten up and not to take life for granted, right? Yes. And it was two years of that until eventually I discovered a much deeper sense of my body, how my body functions, what my weaknesses are, and, and, and the pain wouldn't let me go until I learned my my lesson properly. And I learned so many lessons that if you were to ask me if I could mm -hmm. go back and do it again on a pain, from a pain perspective, I'd say mm -hmm. absolutely not. It was hell. Mm -hmm. But from a lesson perspective, I would relive through that a thousand times because mm -hmm. it was I wouldn't be I wouldn't go to the gym seven days a week. I wouldn't get up at 530 in the morning to exercise and then do cardio four days a week and and do weights like you do and mm -hmm. and eat extremely well and make sure to go for walks and get fresh air and get sunlight and get rest properly. And all of these things are all we're all things not because I'm some guy with super hyper discipline. It's because Mother Nature Demanded will it. will will make you pay for it if you don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she'll make you she'll say hey if you don't learn you don't learn now you will learn eventually so when we're talking oh, yeah. to the 20 year olds who say oh yeah no fuck it i'm fine oh. okay yeah, you're fine for now <laughs> you're fine for now that's fine and maybe if you're learn. lucky maybe if you had a ballet background or if you're a gymnast and you have excellent posture and you're somebody who trains regularly cool but otherwise when the pain kicks in you'll learn because you have no choice mm -hmm. it's either you learn or choice. just sit there and wallow in pain for the rest of your life which is mm -hmm. not really an option right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so how are you doing now how's your how's your pain management now um much better from my upper back i was hiking yeah. in like 2018 and i slipped off the side of a, a mountain oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so i herniated my lower back as oh, well God. um i have two <laughs> in my lumbar and um I, I felt really really badly um and uh, so yeah i do have lower discs as well but uh, okay. it was one after the other um and yeah i it, it, the lower back ones are a little bit harder to deal with mm -hmm. but uh but i also learned uh how to decompress that yeah. and um what to avoid and uh yeah if you because we're artists we feel like we're something about you know that imagining myself as a 20 year old um you feel like we don't have to participate mm -hmm. because we're artists yeah. so we don't have to participate in the big world um and because we 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 kind of cut ourselves off from the world to be these internal um uh, like you know that we're just in our minds and in our heads in the little worlds we build um i think it's like the universe's way and i refer to the universe a lot i don't i don't follow any particular religion but it's just what i do it's how i refer to mother nature really or mm -hmm. the grand scheme of things or whatever is out there um but the universe has a way of making us participate mm -hmm. um and so a lot of artists forget that they are supposed to hike they're supposed to yeah. swim they're supposed to move they are still bodies they're still people they're not just a floating brain with tentacles and no. just draws all day in front of a monitor and it has to get good and it's got to get those online points and no look you have to participate and the more you deny that the more you raise your chances of being a candidate of um uh, of pain um yeah. not that maybe that's not what you did um it doesn't always come from laziness sometimes it comes from being introverted sometimes it comes from actual injuries that were out of your control like mine mm -hmm. yeah um but uh yeah it, it there's a way that we are called back to the outside world right. one way or another we find ourselves out there again and every single time the the, the feedback is the same i've started to draw better the more i found other hobbies yeah. um so the more i started hiking the more i realized like I, that these are things i love that give me some kind of spark that mm -hmm. yes yeah, sparks do run out in life the thing that started you drawing isn't why you still draw in your 30s 
um, and 40s, there's something else has to be involved. The world is so big and there's so much variety and you're not just a closed vacuum that, that you have to have other experiences. And it's as simple as picking up a, um, a hobby like gardening or sculpting or some other thing that gets you out there talking to people. Um, if you have a job where you're talking to people all the time, it's not necessarily like having to talk to people. It's just doing other things. And sitting in front of the computer is so bad for your back, just, mm -hmm. you know, just just that alone. Uh, but it's also bad for your spirit. It's bad for your yep. soul, whatever soul is. It's bad for your mind. Um, it's bad for your mental health. It's, there's so many things that it affects negatively. Um, so like that's a, if you're not going to do it now, like listen to Adam, you guys, if, if you're not doing it now, you will be forced to um, start moving. Um, just do like, you know, 15 squats a day it changes, it changes your life completely three times a week. That alone will take care of a lot. Um, doing push-ups, pull-ups, everything that you can get away with, that you can fit in your schedule. Um, it, it comes back and benefits your art in a big way. Well, I couldn't have possibly put it better myself. Um, oh. Yeah, not only that, but to add to what you said as well, a lot of people, a very common misconception is that we're modular right mm -hmm. we're modular so you know i can work my brain but my body's another part of me and what we don't realize is that the body is a part of the brain and the brain's the part of the body all of these systems work mm -hmm. together and when mm -hmm. you're not active if all you're doing i can't even imagine doing it but if you, all you're doing is just sitting in your studio for hours and hours and hours and you're not moving and you're sitting in this well, you're not getting the fresh air you're not getting sunlight you're not moving you're not hiking you're not training you're not doing anything mm -hmm. um that has a profound impact on you mentally and emotionally as well intellectually mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. find for me if i go you know a week if i actually stretch it that far where i go what, longer than three or four days without going mm -hmm. to the gym without doing some kind of physical activity my mood goes to shit my, mm -hmm. I, I just get moody and irritable. I just can't focus. I feel Helpless. like I can't, yeah. I can't. Yeah. I just, everything, I just get irritable. I get very, very mm -hmm. irritable because my body has, I have redefined what the norm is through exercise. And when mm -hmm. you don't feed it that you real when you're not used to training, when you're, when you're, when you're used to training and you stop and you stop mm -hmm. being active in any which way, shape or form it, mm -hmm. you really feel when you stop. You oh, really, yeah. really notice it. So to any any artists out there that are, when I get emails and messages from people, which I'm sure you get a lot of those too, from people yeah. who are very, very, you know, they're, they're either really frustrated with their artistic growth or they're down about their life or they're going through difficulties and stuff like that. And they really feel like they're at their wit's end and they're reaching out to somebody to be able to help them out. Yeah. A very common piece of advice I'll give them is get out and do something you know mm -hmm. don't try to solve it by sitting down in your studio sitting down at your desk and try to figure it out and the same thing applies to your life you can't mm -hmm. solve life's problems sitting on your ass you have to get yeah. up and move right yeah 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 i really i really believe that wholeheartedly i i completely agree a change is as good as a rest and doing something that is the opposite of art let's say you're you have a painting you know you want to finish and yeah. You're at the point of no return with that painting where you've put in so many hours, but not just that, it's starting to look good and you like it, but you know there's a lot left to do and you're not sure what to do with it. Um, doing something that's the opposite of drawing and obviously just that alone, just taking a break from the painting and leaving and coming back, you you see fresh eyes. With the fresh eyes, you see the, the mistakes. Um, that alone is, is to helps solve the problems that you would never have solved if you just sat there and stared at it and just kept... Yeah. Um, forcing your brain to come up with information it just doesn't have at the moment um, but take that and blow it up and that's your entire life there's mm -hmm. so many things that you need to change around you to get new perspective but not just that to rest the part of your brain that has been so focused on this problem whatever mm -hmm. it is a breakup medical issues you need to take a break from that Part of your brain that's give that part of your brain a break yeah. from trying to solve that and then come back to it and you're just like wow this is so much easier than i than i than i was I mean, it's so so easy i figured it out right away mm -hmm. um and uh and then you also have to remember that your brain remembers the last time you did that task so uh if you make art 
painful by forcing yourself to sit there, trying to solve whatever it is, forcing yourself to learn, got to get that skill, your brain's going to remember, hey, this person isn't that happy while drawing. And so when you think of art, you're going to think of it in like a negative way. Yeah. And you're going to associate a lot of negative energy with art. Um, you have to do art while happy. You have to have fun. You have to be curious. You're not doing that if, you, if you're on your 10th hour that day or 50th hour that week of just forcing yourself to learn. You have to stop and mm -hmm. do other things. It's not a constant computer that's running. It works in bursts and you have to respect the time limits that come with those bursts and find something else to do, even mm -hmm. if it's not rest or sleep, pick up something. The opposite of art, I always tell my students, they, they, they start, you know, asking for cancellations. That's when I start noticing, hey, they're getting overworked. I'm going to wait for them. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, I feel so drained. I'm just yeah. so tired. I'm like, yeah, that's how that happens. You've yeah. been going nonstop. Um, do something. It's part of your homework. And I'll literally write it on their homework. Do something that's not art. Do yeah. something that is so the opposite of art in your opinion. For me, it's being outside, mud in my hands, gardening. Um, it's mm. physical. I'm not thinking, and it's not tedious. There's no particulars. It's just slapping a bunch of uh, uh, mulch and, and and dirt in the ground, and putting plants in, and everything's getting washed. And it's just so physical and out there and in the sun. And art is so quiet and in a corner. And you're just making detailed choices that nobody else thinks about but artists. Um, and so those two really help me find a balance. Um, and that's what I need everybody to, you know, really, really start thinking about Yeah. what's what, in my opinion, in your opinion, like, what's your opinion of the, uh, what is your opinion, like the opposite of art, um, and start, start really understanding that and involving it in your life. It could just be working out, could just be going to the gym, uh, something as simple as that. Give that part of your brain a break and, and respect the time limit. It'll, you'll feel the pushback. You'll feel the fatigue. And, uh, and and once more, the more you respect it, the more of a healthy relationship you'll have with your art, and and then of course respecting your body is a big plus. You know what? I'll I'll add to that is that mm -hmm. I, I I completely agree with that, and I would add to it that when you're doing non-art things, mm -hmm. which I do a lot of, I would I spend the majority of my time not drawing, um, but mm -hmm. I'm very productive when I do draw because yeah. I consider everything else I do in my life a part of that artistic process as well. Like, mm -hmm. I do consider training a part of the artistic process. It's about the wow. health, it's about the mindset, it's about it's about exposure to the outside world. Mm -hmm. But I will unapologetically spend weeks just redesigning my studio. I move shit around all the time. And, oh, and so or I'll, or I'll get into music. I'll just uh, listen to different types of music or whatever the type might, whatever the thing might be, be a dancer, anything, right? I'm just, I'm just constantly, I need to keep myself in a creatively productive mindset, which mm -hmm. I'd argue is something I, again, I was, I was raised around that kind of energy as well. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, I consider my space, I consider my studio, I consider journaling, I consider training, mm -hmm. I consider playing with my cats, mm -hmm. all part of the quote, development process of self. Mm -hmm. And uh, video and photography, all that kind of stuff too, I do on my channel. It's, yeah. it's incredible. And I'm sure you can agree, you can, you can, you can mirror this as well, that mm -hmm. a lot of my teaching, my artistic mm -hmm. teaching, a lot of it comes from science, comes from astrophysics, comes from mm -hmm. sound design, comes from mm -hmm. videography, comes mm -hmm. from cinematography and set design. Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Uh, uh, there's answers out there for artists, but if you're only looking at a blank page trying to solve all your problems that way, you're really limiting yourself artistically. It's and not just, possible. Yeah. No. But, yeah. It's not. Art doesn't happen in a vacuum. And nope. they're trying to build skill in a vacuum. Yeah. So what, are you, what? Where are you pulling this information from? You yeah. have to branch out. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you this as well as to Brack is that is mm -hmm. that a lot of the artists that panic about AI, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that get into this panic about AI, which is justifiable. I mean, AI is yeah. definitely. Um, you know, I'm starting to see more and more people kind of like going, yeah, 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 yeah. using AI. I'm like, dude, don't yeah. do that. Don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, as a tool for learning, yeah, it can be interesting, but uh, you know, you don't want to over rely on that kind of thing, but I'm not going to get in a conversation about AI. I promise you, <laughs> I promise, 
<laughs> but um, if you want to, uh, I'm, I'm come game. Uh, no, yeah, God, go ahead. Guys, back to this shit again. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's people who panic the most. I get emails from people, or I hear, I, I read messages in the comments of my videos sometimes of people who are just like saying, "Screw it, I just fuck it, I gave it up, and I'm done with it. I'm just done with art and AI and this and that." Oof. I would argue that a lot of people, and it's sad to hear that too, right? When people kind of like throw in the towel, but, mm -hmm. um, or the, maybe they're just being dramatic, but either way, mm -hmm. a lot of this comes from being, feeling like you didn't have an escape plan. You didn't have a plan B. It was just like all of your eggs were in drawing. That's it, drawing, mm -hmm. 24 hours mm -hmm. a day drawing. And when you don't have, an, when, you're not, when you don't have a lifeline, in life where there's other things that you can reach to and you haven't kind of developed an adaptable mindset where you can kind of you can you can say okay shit you threw you threw me this okay i can adapt i can adapt i can do all these different things i mm -hmm. can find different means to express myself artistically and just and, and it tack it on to the artistic process the moment somebody pulls the rug out from under you you have another rug to land on and another lug, yeah. rug to land on you you never yeah. feel like oh my god you just obliterated my identity no there's many mm -hmm. facets to your identity honest to goodness if i mm -hmm. if it happened that let's say worst case scenario the big ai comet you know a 16 mile comet just a tooth lands yeah. on art and just bam everything's gone uh -huh. um would i be completely utterly devastated and would it be like oh well you know what my life has been rewritten and i don't know what would i find myself standing in this great abyss yeah. alone with my teddy bear mm -hmm. crying probably mm -hmm. for around 15 minutes and then i'd yeah. up and say there's other shit to do and I, 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 was... I would find i'd find a way to get myself back up right yeah yeah and yeah. even in that scenario it's not like somebody's tied your hands and told you you're not allowed to draw ever again let's say every single job has been taken by ai it yeah. does not mean you don't get to draw in your no. life who said with their law it's, what, what's what's this scenario where people are so apocalyptic about mm -hmm. their self-worth as artists that a computer came and generated an image um and all of a sudden now their license to be artists has been uh, stripped away no that's not the point the point was that you know it's about jobs and making money and i think a lot of people that quit right away um they quit because it was a glory job for them. Mm -hmm. Art was a, a, a road to glory. I want to be the person that works on this movie and works for this studio and yeah. works for Riot. And they associated that with, that's because there's a fundamental self-worth problem in there. They believe that in order to be artists, you have to be a practicing professional. They, they forgot the fact that when they were kids and they had a paper and a crayon, it just flowed and you didn't need permission and it's just the teachers gave it to you and saw what happened and and you have to learn how to walk back to that at least that the lowest rug of the rugs they like the 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 the, 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 the image the lowest rug should always be that need for art as a way to understand your life and you should always have it and it's just sacred nothing can touch it because it's it's just something that has value to you in whatever way you discovered art so you should always always um revisit that do the shadow work do whatever you got to do find mm -hmm. why you like art and if you like art only because of this glory job goal you don't know yourself yet you don't know yourself enough the glory jobs they come and they happen and everybody who's ever got that great job they said it was when i wasn't looking for it it's after i mm -hmm. finally learned to love myself it's after i finally learned to respect myself it's after i learned to be a student again it's always the sense of release and then the rewards come yeah. so this this like obsession with um you know losing that self-worth after ai or whatever it might be you know every anything can attack it's not just ai it's anything that can, can take your art away or, or confuse the way you see your art your art and yourself um but uh art is like this you know everyone sees it as this um like this thing that's that's taken for granted until it's a gone you lose your inspiration life happens and it's really important to go back to it one image for me in particular i feel like we've lost the point but no. one image for me in no, particular like going with this. Um, <laughs> is when i was young um so i was born in the iraq war in 1990 and we were refugees hmm. for like five or six years in saudi arabia wow. and the second uh gulf war the desert storm um and so that's where i discovered art hmm. and it's the it's one of my first memories 
Um, <laughs> there was this girl in the refugee camps. So people were just trying to live the, their best life in those refugee camps. Um, yeah. So we had pencils and we had papers. And this girl, um, she was maybe like 14, 15. I was like four or five. And she showed me a picture of a sketch of hers. It was, it was um, I'm sure if I saw it now, I'd see a thousand mistakes in it. But when I yeah. saw it, I swear the world around me glowed. Um, it mm. was just a simple sketch of a glass cup that was overflowing with water. Mm. And I swear it was my, one of my first memories. And it was just a simple pencil sketch. And I stared at it and I was like, how did you make the world in your drawing, in your mm. paper? How did you put the world in your paper? H how? And I tried to touch it to see if I could feel the water. And I, I, because I never allowed myself to like forget that memory, anytime I feel like I've lost my art or, and I'm not trying to, you know, be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm always in touch with my art. No, I, I literally, maybe like, 50 times a month I say, I'm never going to draw again. <laughs> um, so no, I'm not this like, you know, perfect being. No, no. Um, but because of that one image in my mind and remembering why I found art, what made me love art, capturing form on paper like that. Mm. Um, I don't think anything is really going to take art from me because I'm always going to be curious. So you have to find what it is that keeps you curious about art so that you um, keep coming back to it no matter what. I'm pretty sure there will be all kinds of things equal to AI that come out and and take away our what we perceive as our self-worth. Um, but if the self-worth comes from something else and you have to find that. You have to really do the work and find it. Why do you draw? And yeah. what inspired you in your life particularly? And yeah. hang on to it and write about it and talk about it with people. Keep it at the front of your mouth, as we say in Arabic, um, and uh, always be ready to, to to think about it. And it, it'll keep it, it strengthens your identity as an artist. It, it, when it boils down to it, and all the carpets have been taken, all the rugs have been pulled out from under you. That one can never be. Yeah. Um, it's your foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Major tangent, but I hope I made it's the best. <laughs> best possible i love your tangents that, that's why i that's why i binge on your live streams when you're not knowing it because i'm oh, creepy no. that way but no it's okay let me tell you something you know i said let's not go down the air fuck it let's go down the air because there's go. something i wanted to add to this yeah. i wanted to, and it was a thought i had that i never never actually had a chance to share because it's something that I, I i was watching um a couple of different things but i remember watching the diary of the ceo interview with michael buble okay mm -hmm. And I've all Michael Bublé. He's amazing. He's great. He's 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 he knows what he's doing, etc., etc., etc. Good for him. But that's not my point. It's mm -hmm. he can't. And you could tell the first thing that I noticed immediately, and I've and I knew it in the back of my head before mm -hmm. seeing this interview is he mm -hmm. can't go anywhere. He knows he's gonna sing without having auto tune on. And if you watch that Diary of a CEO video, the first thing I went was, wow, he's got auto tune on. I didn't you know? know that. Like you could hear, you could hear that between him and the interviewer, like he, his voice sounds auto-tuned right there. And he spent a good hour, hour and a half talking with this weird robotic sounding voice until, ah, okay, he kicked into song and all of a sudden he has this perfect pitch. Um... And it was about maybe a week later or something like that. I'd watch, I'd watched this and I was kind of like, you kind of, you ignore it after a certain point. It's like, whatever. But I was kind of like sitting there going, you know, he was talking about his his strive for perfection as a as a musician. I'm sitting there going, buddy, you ain't perfect. You're auto tuning mm -hmm. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing to hit in him. Like I said, I mm -hmm. don't hate the guy, but I don't hate him. I think he does mm -hmm. great stuff. But I mean, let's call a spade a spade. You got fucking auto tune on, okay? So right. you ain't perfect yeah. if you got auto tune on. But that's the thing. He, I think that Michael Bublé. There's something missing in Michael Bublé's music. And if you like Michael oh. Blade, please don't hate on me or hate on me, whatever. I have my opinion. Oh my God, but, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, if you've heard it, yeah. And um, I was watching a sound editor. He, I think the video was talking about how a lot more people use autotune than you might think. Yeah. But he was talking about how certain musicians use it well and certain musicians don't. And he used, I think it was Adele. Oh no, Freddie Mercury. He was talking about mm -hmm. Freddie Mercury, and he compared Freddie Mercury to Bublé. Okay, Freddie Mercury is somebody who's known for having excellent pitch, right? Mm -hmm. And he, when he actually extracted the audio track of Freddie Mercury singing really, really well, like in his game type of thing, and he, mm -hmm. you actually look at the sound wave, it's very wavery, it's very imperfect. But mm -hmm. 
it's that and this is something i teach too artistically it's mm -hmm. is that the imperfection the is the soul mm -hmm. the imperfection is the personal expression is that when freddie mercury's singing he's got a lifetime of of shit he's overcome and obstacles yeah. he's overcome and self-doubts that he's overcome and he had to come to terms with certain things about his personality and his his appearance and his talent his family and yeah it's everything right mm -hmm. he had a lot of shit that like you can hear that that life in his voice yeah. even though he's got an incredible amount of of talent and and skill and he worked his ass off to get that great voice it's not perfect so when he sings something it just sucks the air out of your lungs. Like, oh, my God, yeah. right? Yes. Where Michael Bublé, if you when he took Michael Bublé's sound, of, uh, something straight from his song, and he put it into a sound editing software, and you could see the sound curve, it is a flat line. Mm -hmm. There's no wavering to it. And as a result, you don't feel him through his music. You just nope. hear this pitch. You're now, why so am I going right. on on this tangent about it? It's because my AI. feelings about ai is it's the auto-tune mm -hmm. of art, of art. Exactly. i look at i look at something that's auto-tuned i look at i look at ai art and objective or subjectively it's mm -hmm. great you know oh look at that it's a nice gothic and if it was somebody had for fun had sent me an image uh uh putting in adam duff as the prompt in adam duff yeah. style and it mm -hmm. gave me, it sent me back something that I went, yeah, that looks like something I could have drawn. And I could even kind of tell what drawings of mine it had extracted from in order to come up with this idea. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't even remotely threatened by that because mm -hmm. I was looking at it going, yeah, it's great. And from a technical perspective, it's, it's good enough, you know, and at a certain point, it might even be better for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. I doubt it can be better because it can't be more than me than myself. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, but um and it can't read my mind either so it's no way mm -hmm. no way that i could possibly figure out where i'm going with my art but i looked right. at it and i went yeah i can see it that it's 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 visually good but it's a mo it's it i don't feel a human in that art it feels like an auto yeah. it's like somebody took my voice and ran it through autotune it felt yes. soulless mm -hmm. right it's just mm -hmm. it's just image creation and what you know alluding back to your portraits looking back at your portraits i i don't look at your portraits and just see wow really well drawn face if all i looked at if i looked at that that page if because i keep looking at it but if yeah. i look at this page and all i see are just well executed faces mm -hmm. i wouldn't give a shit about your art mm -hmm. it wouldn't it wouldn't have any meaning to me but the fact mm -hmm. that I look at it and I feel, I can feel something. If I look deeply into it, I can feel there's a lot of psychological weight to these faces. These yeah. are people that have experienced things. And that's something AI is, unless it could let, I'm unless, you were, unless you were controlling it yourself and expressing mm -hmm. yourself emotionally through it, then yeah. I, I just don't see the threat of mm -hmm. that being taken because humanity is defined by its imperfection not by its perfection yeah. right yeah 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 sorry um, i promised i wouldn't but here i am no, Fair enough. no it's okay I'm, I'm loving this topic mm. i wanted to add um yeah i've started to pick up on what looks ai and what doesn't mm. um and it's always the perfect face it's mm. the face that i try not to paint mm. um it's the face that has has perfect spacing between the eyebrows and the eyes perfect tilt in the eyes perfect nose no, no breaking in the nose and if you look at my art you see i'm always breaking the girl's noses mm. um and oh, yeah. um, i'm check. always like messing up the one <laughs> eye is always a little bit lower uh, the nose yeah. is kind of a little bit too big and because i can't draw a barbie anymore and if i do have more of a more beautiful girl like the very first one in the line she's probably the pretty Prettiest, let's say quote unquote prettiest she also has a lot of flaws in her there's just a little bit of something sinister behind the eyes or vengeful mm -hmm. that smile isn't entirely innocent mm -hmm. um so i i try to uh to look at art nowadays and see if some artists lately have, they think they're so sneaky they've been referencing ai um and all of a sudden you know in one or two years all of a sudden they're painting these 
very particularly perfect portraits and that it does not feel like their art from two or three years ago and it's obvious they've started to implement AI at some level in their in their process um, and it's because the face is so perfect mm. it's flawless it's flat lined as you say it's like a flat line is perfect mm. um, and there it, there are no mistakes the, the perspective is flawless mm. a person doesn't take on we've fucked up perspectives so many times in our histories as artists and mm -hmm. humanity across time that it became the standard to draw imperfect perspective and mm -hmm. that's what looks good perfect perspective started to feel weird and like rotoscoping when you see it animated um it, if it's animated exactly over the character that the actor it feels weird as yeah, a drawing weird. we need like something in there stuff, yeah yeah, we want to see something um, that has flaws in it. And yeah. the human flaw is what defines the human. Um, or just We're so shitty at stuff, and that's why we keep trying over and over and over again, and then we get really good at it, but there's just a little bit of flaw left over from mm -hmm. when we were beginners. It's like when they say, yeah, you're, you're 34 right now, but you're also still five years old. You're also still 10 years old. That's like a something that psychiatrists try to help, you know, people with trauma and stuff, how they help mm -hmm. them get over it. They say, you're still the age that, that you didn't get over that age. You're, there's that age is still in you. And so you have to respect your inner child. So it's it's about AI and self-worth. And you're, you, the fact that you're there's a beginner in you still, even no matter how many years you put into it, is what makes your art interesting to look at. You're still making beginner choices, maybe not mistakes, but there's some charm in there. And AI has none of that. There is no dimension. There is no deeper, nothing behind that. It's just perfect perspective. Brush jokes they stole and 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 estimated and and and, and averaged out of other artists and. You don't need to feel threatened because the world will get sick of that sterile look and it will go back, it will move back. Um, Instantly, to, yeah. Yeah, it will move back to something that feels more human, flawed, weird, not well painted, not well drawn, and that's what people want to see. They want to yeah. see more of that. Um, and so I, that's why I say always try to redefine what art means for you. Remember that it's okay to be a mistake maker. You never really stop being one. Um, and exactly, and I honestly, I never noticed that about Michael Buble. I knew there was something about the way he sang because I, I sing, so I try to sing mm. along. I'm like, I can't do this. No, this I couldn't hear his pitch. Who, yeah. Who can do this? Does he yeah. must be like you know? I had no idea he used this auto tune. That's insane. Oh, like uh, like 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 ad nauseum, yeah. Oh my god! I well, did it's not it's know pure. That. I compare. You know who I compare him to is Harry Connick Jr. Because I grew up loving Harry mm -hmm. Connick Jr. He's got. Mm -hmm. I was born in New Orleans as well, so you know I mm -hmm. feel I have those roots, even though I was only there for five months of my life. The first mm -hmm. five, right? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, um, he feels his music, right? And he even teaches. He teaches singers to f like what are you singing like you know like he was <laughs> coaching somebody when he first started working in um and there was something else i wanted to talk about i don't want to lose my train of thought but um he uh he was teaching uh this young woman how to to sing the song um my my funny valentine mm -hmm. right and he's at the piano and he's he's listening to the girl singing and and she's singing and it sounds really impressive she's hitting all those cool fun notes and he stops and goes whoa 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 stop stop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's wet and he goes what's the song about and she goes it's my funny valent my sweet little valentine your 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 looks are least are less than greek and he goes do you know what that means she goes no it means you're ugly <laughs> <laughs> when your looks are less than greek it means you're not attractive yeah but i love yeah. you anyways right yeah and yeah. she went oh okay and he goes well sing that you're, think about what you're singing. You're singing a song where you're telling somebody that even though you're not, I, I don't give a shit if you're the prettiest thing in the world, that you're beautiful to me. Your soul is mm -hmm. beautiful. I love you for who you are, not not mm -hmm. because you're not because you're Captain America with your perfect teeth and your and your blonde mm -hmm. part, right? I don't give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she went, oh, and she goes, now sing the song, sing the message. Mm -hmm. With Feel sadness, it. with grief, yeah. Yeah, there's there's just there's just humanity in all of that mm -hmm. and and she sang it and all of a sudden people gasped just like hey 
this woman can sing. <laughs> she's wow. got, she's got, she, there's a soul behind this. She's not just trying to show off that she can hit all those Ariana Grande notes and shit. Nobody cares, right? right? Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, good for her. Good for Mariah Carey. She can hit all those notes. At a certain point, that becomes a novelty. And you need to be able yes. to say, what's she doing beyond just being impressive? I'm very, very particular about my space. Yeah. I'm very particular about, to me, my space is an extension of me creatively. Yep. And I, it's something I advocate for with my students and, you know, people listening to me on my channel and stuff like that. Your space isn't just a place where you sleep or a place where you just sit down and set yourself up. You want to express yourself through it and it should be an extension of how you feel. And to me, like you said, if I've got shit all over the place, if it's a mess, mm -hmm. if I've got, especially if I, if I want to shoot B-roll of a cup, my entire mm. studio, I don't know how the hell I do it. But I end up with a complete disaster of a studio because mm -hmm. to get that cup filmed, I need to get the tripod in there with the camera and then the angle's not right. So then I have to move my desk out of the way. And then that oh. stupid plant's in the way. So I have to move the plant into the <laughs> other side. And then I need to prop something up on boxes. So I end up going into my storage to get extra boxes to lift up that plant because I oh, want it in the man. foreground. I'm getting anxiety just like, <laughs> Oh, God. I need to. I need to take a breather. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it is complete disaster really quickly. It's amazing because uh -huh. I, I make a lot, I do a lot with a smaller space. It's not a big, you know, yeah. I'm not a full-time filmmaker here with a loft mm -hmm. to shoot in, right? So right. I make do with a smaller space. And if it's still in its cluttered state, good luck getting me to feel inspired drawing. Hell no. Not going to happen. No way. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. People forget, like, before you draw, you should have, a, you know, a nice, nu nutritious meal. You yeah. should you know, get a sweat, you know, it's just raise your heart rate a little bit. You mm -hmm. should clean your home. You should, there. you prepare for that long term period of uh, like rumination and heavy mind, mind uh, work. Yeah. So like it, it, you have to, um, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like an offering you make uh, when you're cleaning um, and preparing, you're making it a sacred space. Uh, like the way a priest would just keep the area clean before praying or, or mm. in Islam, you have to do your ablutions. You have to clean your body. You, you wash yeah. your arms, your face, um, and then you make sure your, your prayer mat is clean. And it's a yeah. sort of ritual that prepares you and helps kind of get your nervous system buzzing and helps you feel clean, wakes everything up. Yeah. Uh, while you're doing this ritual and uh, I feel like that's what I'm doing um, it's sacred to me art is like a, this really long prayer um, yeah. not that I have a religious connection to it or anything but that's mm -hmm. what I'm associating it with yeah. and um, it, 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 that's what it feels like when it's not just about being a stickler for cleanliness and oh you've got ADHD or that's how they kind of put us away and all you clean people are so insufferable um but no it's actually a lot of respect that we're paying toward our uh, our, our office our area of prayer and mm. that's how i feel um, with everything it extended into my whole house extends into my yard to my front yard to my garden it's the sort of respect that you pay to your craft by keeping your area clean i love the and fact think, that you put it like that yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. a respect it, towards your, it's a respect of self. It's a respect of mm -hmm. your space and your craft. Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm respectable, yeah. Istabrak. That is so cool. <laughs> I didn't notice, I, I didn't know I had quads. This is so cool. <laughs> it's uh, very no. spiritual. Yeah. It's very spiritual. It really spiritual. is. Yeah. 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 That even though I'm just I'm just drawing a character, even though, you know, as, as I'm, as we're talking here, we've got like a mm -hmm. time lapse of our, of our paintings yeah. going on and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm very environmentally aware while I'm doing this painting mm -hmm. process, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's very It's so cool how many similarities you and I have in a our lot. life. A lot. And talking to you, it's like I'm talking to, like, I, there's some things I never noticed that you are, you have the piece, you have that missing piece. And there's something you never noticed that I'm uh, kind of revealing to you. We yeah. have, we have predestined to have this conversation. I really, honestly, <laughs> honest to goodness, yeah. I, I really believe that. It's funny um, you're saying that because I feel that way when I'm listening to your live streams, mm -hmm. you know, I'm listening to you just joking around and doing voices mm -hmm. and impressions and joking around and laughing at people being stupid. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it's a really, for me, it's very, it's very therapeutic. I mean, just what just just listening to you is very cathartic for me, and it's fun. And you might not know this, but I am pissing myself laughing. 
I am pissing myself laughing. I laugh so hard. Nobody knows what the hell I'm laughing at, but I'm like literally sweating laughing some sometimes so much because it gets really funny at a certain point. But yeah. um, it's I'm also sitting there listening to you going, fuck. I love listening to you talk. I love listening to the, the interaction and the jokes that are shared back and forth. And the way you express yourself is just, yeah, you know? I really like, like you. You're really yeah. cool. Yeah. Thank very you. Very much. Yeah. Thank you. It really feels like I'm among like kin. You know, like you've, you've found family like that. When you finally meet the people that know how you speak, that know why mm. you're picking those words that you're that you're using, you found your 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 group. Um, yeah. And that's like that's our discourse community. That's our field. And it's not just art that has you know that's our similarity it's the way we are as people the mm -hmm. way we store and express information and emotions and our emotional intelligence and i yep. feel like you i know you've said it many times about me that i have empathy mm -hmm. but you have tons of empathy while you're while you're teaching whenever you uh try to uh, envision yourself as the student you really know how to summarize their emotions like really mm. quickly not in a dismissive way and like i see you um so you you definitely have that you mirror a lot of my qualities and i mirror a lot mm. of yours because like we speak the same language yeah it's not just about our and that's why like the fact that we work out the fact that we had a back problem responded to it in the same way mm -hmm. um our art the way we express our art the way we've kind of picked a very particular um genre and stuck with it um mm -hmm. these are all like really really it's not just a coincidence i think no. there's some larger thing and we're both teachers and yeah. it's really really cool talking to you adam yeah yeah ditto ditto <laughs> that's my deep response <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go patrick swayze on you for this one ditto, <laughs> ditto. wow this guy's deep yeah no i completely <laughs> i i reflect everything you're saying right back at you and what can I tell you? It's really amazing in this field, and and there's so many artists, so many channels, and I've you know I, I caught, obviously I cut myself off from the, the the mainstream for a long time and just kind of stayed in my hermitage. Yeah. And um, it's a just I I feel like the wait was worth it. I feel like I'm I'm very happy, and I res I respect that part of me that wanted to break away and disconnect from other channels. I respect other channels. I really do. And I, I have nothing but respect for them. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not because, you know, I, I feel like I have nothing in relate to, to relate to with them. It's not that at all. I was just waiting. I feel like one, I felt like one day maybe I'll meet an amazing creator that understands me as a creator, mm -hmm. but also as a person. And I, I honestly, I'm, I, I feel like that was the wait was worth it. And, yeah. um, I think there's nobody better. Um, and I'm so glad I waited. And I'm very, very grateful for this. Me too. Me too. Very much so. And yeah, I, I and it meant a lot to me too. I remember you posting a video a little while back. And I watched it again recently where you you'd shared mm -hmm. some of the some of the 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 well the drama, I guess. You, yeah. You yeah. had dealt with in the past and just dealing yeah. with bad actors and stuff like that. And yeah, I imagine that must have been pretty uh, traumatic, uh, honestly, yeah. you know? Yeah. It must yeah. have been pretty traumatic and especially, but here's the thing too. Let me tell you something. You know how you kind of, you just, you were, you were describing yourself as having put up a wall and you'd mm -hmm. have a hard time trusting as a result of certain experiences you've had in your life and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't completely agree with you on that one mm -hmm. because um, here's the thing. There's naivety mm -hmm. and there's trust. There's being trusting. It's trustfulness. Mm -hmm. And to me, trust is a choice. Yes. Trust is a, is a, is a, is a, is a gift that you give somebody from yourself. It is a willing gift you give to somebody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like for instance, if I take my cats, for instance, or my children, for instance, um, to me, if, so, if somebody was to ask me what the greatest gift somebody can give you, what is the greatest thing that a person can give you? It's trust mm -hmm. to me, right? Mm -hmm. My cats jump up on my table and sit down on my keyboard while I'm in the middle of doing something because they trust I'm not going to grab them and throw them across the room. They trust right. that they're safe. They trust that if they bug me and meow at me and rub on my leg, that I'm going to listen and feed them, right? Mm -hmm. And 
um, when it came to what you had been through, what you had experienced, I don't, I don't regard you. I don't see you as somebody who has given up on trust. I don't see you as mm -hmm. somebody who's been jaded. Mm -hmm. I see you as somebody who chose to give your trust to somebody, and that somebody screwed you over. That somebody mm -hmm. betrayed that trust, mm -hmm. and taught you not to trust them. But when I mm -hmm. listen to the way you are with people and I listen to how willing you are to trust other people, you do trust. You trust mm -hmm. quite open-heartedly. You're just mm -hmm. not stupid. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not stupid. You you've you've grown up, you've 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 taken a few punches in your life and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. you do choose to trust people. And I think that's the most beautiful form of it. It's the one that you it's the one that you're willing to give mm -hmm. when you know on the drop of a dime you could recognize a game. Mm -hmm. You know right away. You've, you've, you've read all the books on narcissism and love bombing and manipulative behavior mm -hmm. and all that kind of... Mm -hmm. you're, you're very well versed on bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, but you still choose to give your trust. That's, a, that's an incredible gift to give somebody. And when you, when, you, when you kind of publicly thanked me for being, for being somebody that you could trust... Um, that was a magnificent compliment to my character because that to me is like being it. trusted by my cats, <laughs> right? Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that it's a trust that is felt. It is, it is a raw human feeling and mm -hmm. you, you offered me that gift despite the fact that you had been screwed over, which to me means that you trust me while still having your bullshit filter up. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I return that a thousandfold. Thank I really you. honestly do. Because for you to be able to offer somebody a gift like that is very much worth cherishing, in my opinion. So I thought I'd, I'd say that publicly so you Thank knew you, that. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Thank you, you're Adam. You're welcome. Yeah. And that video, I actually went on for five minutes about you, but I edited it down because I was like, oh no, this is weird. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like really obsessing over him. Maybe I should. Maybe I should have. Maybe it might annoy him, you know, just to go on. Maybe I don't want to involve him too much in this video because I, I, I just I made start. You know, the part that I edited out was that I made a cross comparison between your personality and everybody else, and mm. I was like, this is the sign of a person who has compassion. This is what a respectful person does. This is what someone with emotional intelligence does. This is the honesty. This is how uh, they usually. But in this, all these things. I saw an Adam and that's mm. why it was it wasn't even it didn't even take any effort as soon as I saw your videos as soon as I saw how kind you were and just like you you were so successful and you have so much experience and you are a household name now in, in the artist community but you didn't walk with this sense of ego and ego is so common in our mm. field and it just sometimes people are introduced they see the ego before they see the artist. Um, and I didn't get that at all from you. And you have this, um, this sense of like you're wise and you know you're with the, someone who's wise. You know you're, whatever you tell them, it's in safe hands. And mm. I got that from you right away. And so I edited all that out and I was like, you know what, just thank him gracefully, okay? Um, you don't have to go into his personality. He just barely knows you, you barely know him. But uh, from what I do know about you, what I did know at the time when I first did that call with you and the others, um, I, I knew I was, I was with someone safe. I was with someone good. I was with someone um, who had a lot of experience with shitty people too. That's what I got out of your, um, the way you are, the way you carry yourself and you learned and you watched and you knew how to respect people based mm -hmm. off maybe how people might have um, wronged you. And I knew I was talking to a kindred spirit um, and uh, whether or not we were ever gonna have a call, um, I still had to p have some of you in that video that I shared where I just basically just, you know, shared everything. I mm -hmm. knew I had to, I could not edit that part, everything out. I knew I had to leave some of Adam Duff in there because it's such a big thing for me. I know myself, I'm just yeah. a nervous wreck sometimes and I could not allow myself to uh, ignore that. I so effortlessly, almost like I was in a trance, trusted you without even trying to because mm -hmm. of the kind of person that you are and the yeah. kind of artist that you are. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to thank you for not, um, not, uh, 
letting me <laughs> hide. <laughs> like, no. thank you for seeking me out and thank you for putting me in my place. I, I really do. The world needs you. What you do is very unique. And um, I say this all the time, but the service you're providing to the community, no one else is doing it. No one is working as this, like, you know how in MMORPGs, there's always like the main city that everyone travels to and that's where mm -hmm. the main um, trading post is and that's where you go to get started if you're a new character build and that's where you have to come back for like this epic mission and that's where all the great leaders are in that mm -hmm. game. That's exactly what you're doing for this community. You are the main hub. You are the central hub where everybody, all the paths are crossing there on Adam's channel. And um, I think that's just amazing what you're doing. That's definitely not what I'm doing. I'm an island off the coast, <laughs> completely disconnected. I'm not a central hub in any way with my channel. I've kind of just made it a very specific type of channel about fundamentals and learning and critique. But you have branched out into that and everything else and i admire you and admire what you're doing it takes so much emotional patience and uh vision um and uh thank you for not letting me hide away in my island in my corner thank you for involving me i really appreciate it and thank you for seeing me i really appreciate it well you're very welcome and i want you to know too that that um <clears throat> that that is something i would i would rather kill myself than ever violate that trust in you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That I protect that trust you have, and I would never, uh, I'd never want to, um, I'd never want to take advantage of that in any which way, shape, or form. It's to me that's something that's very precious to me. That said, what you said about my ego and not having an ego, mm -hmm. you've obliterated that because my ego is now way off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What have I done? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's more flattery than my <laughs> my petty little man brain could handle. But uh, yeah, no, well, thank you for that. Um, it's interesting what you're saying too. Um, well, for starters, I disagree with what you said about you not being that central figure. Yes, oh. I very much do believe you are. And you know, as much oh. praise as you offered me um, in that regard, um, there's a reason why you have such a camaraderie and such a close relationship with the people that that follow your channel and that and mm. that follow your live streams and stuff. It's because mm. they're kindred spirits too. You know, these are mm -hmm. people that are very attracted to authenticity mm. and i can see that just that 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 exchange you have with all your listeners and stuff like that is so mm. therapeutic for me to listen to because they're all good mm -hmm. people these are all good souls oh, they're, they're my and family I, I, yeah. you can see that you have that yeah. just that that confidence with each other that you can just mm -hmm. be yourself right mm -hmm. um yeah i really do see that and you as a result you're not you despite what you've been through and despite what you've experienced in your life that um you choose to to behave and react and set a precedent that you feel is right and as mm. a result of that anybody who gravitates towards you are i can see people who do not under normal circumstances bring drama they're yeah. people who like a refreshing, honest person because I'm mm. pretty sure many of your listeners have been through, they, they've had their ass handed to them a few times too in life. Mm -hmm. And they can see the depth of, of your character in that sense. Thank you. Right. So, how about that for gushing back and forth and being <laughs> completely obnoxiously cringy? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy care. that we've had this Adam. opportunity to care. appreciate each other, really, honestly. <laughs> Teaching. Mm. Yeah, I, this is something I actually wanted to ask at the beginning, though. Like something I wanted to bring up at the beginning is like a, kind of a general topic for anybody listening. I want to help to kind of like to to promote what you do, right? Your school oh, and yeah. and and your channel and all that kind of stuff. The whole Thank one you. of the. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, you mean the world to me, but I want everybody to discover you through through my channel as well, oh, right? Thank you. And like, tell me, just kind of tell me a little bit more like your teaching, your school and, and all that kind of stuff. Where can people find you, your Patreon? So just kind of get a little plug there for you. Okay. Um, so I, I, I live stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And I like to live stream because it feels more like a live class. And mm -hmm. I bring in work uh, submitted by viewers um, from my Reddit um, to into my Photoshop. I bring in the work and I critique it. Um, and I critique it uh, maybe sometimes with a particular fundamental in mind. I critique it as a general um, kind of critique, what stands out the most, what's the biggest problem. Um, I 
sometimes just throw my skill at a painting and see what happens. And the biggest part of that class is the before and after where I show the fundamentals in action. Um, mm -hmm. I think that diagramming, visual learning, all that is extremely important. And it's hard to have a, it's hard to point at a fundamental and say, this is where it is without a, without a before and after. Yeah. Um, so that's like a big part is I want to make the abstract concrete when it comes to the fundamentals, make them less mystical. Um, and, uh, that is what I do. And that's it. I critique people's work. Um, and I teach everything. I, uh, sometimes I have classes that aren't critique, they're just lessons. Like how to paint a nose, how to paint eyes, what's form, what's light, what's edging. Um, and sometimes I uh, talk about edge work through a an illustration, um, a mm -hmm. critique, um, and teach the lesson through the critique. But critique is a fundamental part of my channel because mm -hmm. It involves the viewers in uh, the, the you this these are your mistakes shown back at you and mm -hmm. they are mistakes that we all make and it's a community driven endeavor and it is I think that's where the um, the appeal comes from and that's where the friction comes from too but uh -huh. that's where the appeal comes from and it's it shows people that it's not just going to be a lesson taught by a pro showing only pro art and this is how you do it. It's showing how the professional decision can be made when illustrating through the lens of beginner art. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is where it's most effective because the befores and the afters um, are, they, they show the real, that's where the lesson happens. And it's about the way the students receive it. Um, the mm -hmm. before and after gives them proof. It's a trial and here's your proof. This is it. Are you convinced? What's your verdict? This is a fundamental in action. It's right here. It's called this fundamental. And that's okay. how I teach. I like to teach that way. Okay. And how often, and I, how many times a week do you teach? Twice, two free classes. And two, then okay. I have a private class, private yeah. classes that run from like all of the whole weekdays. Okay. Um, and uh, they, uh, th that's private tutoring, that's paid, that's not the free. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I'm all sure. these live streams are all free. You just yeah. have to submit to my subreddit and I pick pieces according to how I want to run that free class. Um, and yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday, um, YouTube has been a little bit fishy about the way they send out my notifications. Yeah. My channel's been kind of under for a while, but yeah. I branched out to Instagram and I started making reels and some of my videos hit a million views on Instagram, Ooh. which I'm really happy about. I was going to ask you about the, that actually. The yeah. Moon. Yeah. yeah, I've been, I'm so happy and grateful that that happened. Okay. I think the condensed process is really helping people not only find my channel, but also because it's now the age of short form content, I had mm -hmm. to, I had to adapt. It, ha it had to happen. And so from November to February, I hauled ass. I was editing every day, making reels. Um, oh, and okay. uh, it worked. It was successful. Um, so I got tons of followers. But not just that, more, I reach more people and nothing is more satisfying than getting those comments that say something clicked in my brain that I yeah. have been struggling with for years Yeah, and it clicked and oh yeah. my gosh, it just, it just, I love that it's feeling so good too, to hear yeah. that. I, just, yeah. I love that feeling. It's, it's why I teach. Yeah, um, me too. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy more people have been finding me. I do have a Patreon. Um, yeah. We do have lessons every month, homework every month, critiques okay. every month. Um, and uh and i think that's it i i do have a lot of avenues um yeah. so there's you know there's i think that's it <laughs> it's interesting what you're saying about youtube as well because i've been noticing well for start mm -hmm. whatever they did to the you know recommended algorithm, algorithm just mm -hmm. for what i want to watch because i youtube's pretty much the only kind of platform i watch i don't watch tv or any of that stuff mm -hmm. but i'm like what is this shit that they're 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 it's all viral crap you know yeah. it's all like soulless viral crowd like i don't none of this shit interests me so i really mm. have to go digging for the people that i'm all of these hundreds of people i'm subscribed to right mm. and i'm just kind of sitting there going what is what are they doing with the platform just youtube just feels so off to me lately especially since mm -hmm. the beginning of 2024 it just seemed something really the dna of youtube's changing behind the scenes mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um i too uh have been considering because i never really invested a lot of my energy into instagram i really mm -hmm. didn't but if i was mm -hmm. to if i was to invest my energy somewhere else i don't like spreading myself out 
too thin over too many different venues. It just that's mm-hmm. how you burn out, right? But mm-hmm. Instagram's oh, yeah. definitely <laughs> something where I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean that that's something that I that it's definitely a platform where artists can be celebrated. It's yes. not a generic platform, and it's still a very valid platform as far as that goes. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you're kind of encouraging me to to do it, make do a it, better do presence it, of it, myself on Instagram. <laughs> you noticed it really made a difference for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, what I noticed is that because Facebook is the real money making machine and Meta, they don't try to. Um, only promote the clickable stuff in Instagram. They do, but they want you to, they also want to filter the audience and what their likes and dislikes are so they can uh, better send out like actual clickable ads that they will actually be interested in. I find that products I actually want to buy are being recommended to me. Um, Whereas on YouTube, it's just a bunch of crap I would never get. So YouTube is like the only thing that Google has, whereas Meta has, you know, Facebook, and then it's got Instagram. And mm-hmm. not just that, you, Instagram is image based. And so artists thrive there because yeah. what you see is what you get. And also now they allow you to have reels. So it's like this, it's it's like YouTube and TikTok combined and made it only about images. And obviously yeah. that's really good for artists. So I was gonna think, I was thinking about TikTok, but I'm like, no, it's, it's flooded. And I was thinking about making a new channel on YouTube and I'm like, no, it's still YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I think Instagram is like the best place. And there were so many signs that were telling me just take Instagram. Um, it was just the people there, the fans, the fact that you can talk to fans. They turned off messaging yeah. on YouTube, which was really unfortunate. I wish they didn't do that. Messaging channels directly was really nice. Yeah. They got rid of that. So I really liked that. Just being able to talk to my viewers. And um, and uh, and yeah, just the fact that they allow you to see the image, see the the the, the art before um, the the ad, and yeah. so like that's what I really like about Instagram. Um, you know, who knows? It might change. Things change. The, the the whole platform might change one day. But for now, it's favoring artists. It's not suppressing them. It's not oppressing them the way we see in YouTube right now. Yeah, the I really amount do. of stuff that's I stopped watching shit on YouTube. Um, if I do want to find a YouTube YouTube channel, I find them through Instagram and then I find oh, their really? YouTube. Huh. And then, you know, if, if they make a certain type of, like, if they know how to, if they're specialists in certain types of flowers, I know whose channel to go to and ho- mm-hmm. hopefully they have a YouTube and now I can have a direct, I'm not going to get that kind of recommendation no matter how many times I search how to plant dahlias on YouTube. I'm not going to get dahlia tutorials. Mm. <laughs> Even if I keep searching, I'll get one or two. Maybe I'll get the most popular ones, but they're not always the best ones. I want to get those niche ones that really the tried and tested channels that don't have 300,000 followers. Um, and usually they have tons of followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Instagram is a great search engine for YouTube. Um, so oh, I never it's, thought it's, of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really great place to be right now. For now, I don't know if this is going to get outdated really fast, but right now it's where it's where the students are. It's where the noobs are, which I love. Um, that's where I want to find them and I want to talk to them. And that's why the reels are so successful, because there are so many of them that are not being trained because my YouTube, my channel isn't coming out. You know, that's no. not going out. Lots no. of people are not finding the teachers they need. We're here just ready to teach everybody for yeah. free. We want to change the world in some way we can, some small way, and we can't find our students. Nope. Um, and that's where they are. They're in TikTok, but TikTok is a little, you know, uh, oh, but mostly, yeah, I can't either. Call me old, I don't care, I can't. Um, and there's uh, Instagram. So that's why I feel like Instagram is a great place for, from a business standpoint as well. Yeah, um, yeah Instagram is the way to go. Okay. Okay, yeah. so give lizard men, meta men, your money. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> you don't even have to spend money. You don't even have to do a business account. Even the most basic no. account, the most standard personal account, if you make reels and know how to tag them properly and know how to pick the right topics, they will be sent out. They will be sent. You that's, will be recommended. You're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was a video that I didn't even think would ever hit a million. It was the most simple critique I did two years, three years ago. Okay. And it just broke a million. It's 1.1 million now, I think. Um, and people like it. It's it's not that my people. It's not that people didn't like what I made. I realize that is that people can't find what I do, and I have yeah, to. Yeah, it just go they just, it just never reaches them. Yeah, right? because YouTube yeah. doesn't feel like artists and the fans of artists and the followers of our channels are active buyers. I think YouTube recommends the channels who have viewers that click. I mean, makeup channels, fashion channels, it's, tech channels. It's honest to goodness. Yeah. It's it's 
it's turning into clickbait channel. It's yeah, really it's going an to ad change. machine. Yeah. L- listen, like for my son, for instance, eleven years old, the, the shit that it recommends <clears throat> to Lucas is just it, yeah. it's 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 very frustrating. And I'm like, no, I keep telling him to get off of that. I don't want you watching that crap. It's real yeah. mindless dribble. Yes. ADHD yes. inducing crap. I really yeah. hate it. And it's trying to do the same thing to me. I mean, it's crazy that Oops, that sorry. every second short or every second video I get is some girl in yoga pants doing some downward dog. Yes. I'm sitting going, yeah. and I'll literally actively click not interested. And they'll just keep feeding yeah. it to me. They'll say, yeah, no, yes. no, you're a guy. Eventually you'll click on it. And I'm just thinking, you know what? Screw off. It's, it's yes. at a certain point, you just get so completely irritated by this crap, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. YouTube it, is sorting its audience by their clicks. By their and clicks. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. And it's doesn't care about content right now. It cares about organizing their active buyers yeah. because it's an ad machine. YouTube's biggest source of income, Google's biggest source of income is advertisement. Yeah. Um, and YouTube is one huge way they're doing it. They care less about content. They care less about humanity, and they they don't care about <laughs> they don't yeah. care about that at all. Especially artists. Who gives a shit about artists, right? Yeah. And uh, they care more about their their advertisers, what they're buying into when they pay YouTube to advertise their products. Hey, this algorithm is for you, advertiser. It's not yeah. for us. It's not for the user. We are just the sheep being herded here and there and so that's why i felt like it was not a reliable place to host i'm grateful for them for allowing my videos to stay up um but uh but i just see it now as an index a library polluted library but still a library i'm starting to function mostly through instagram now yeah you know i for me like producing the youtube my youtube videos is is very important to me i like the fact that i am a long form person first and foremost Mm -hmm. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I just take a long time to get to the point. That's the bottom line. And mm-hmm. for me, that I, I can't see myself abandoning that by any stretch. It just It's just very meaningful to me to produce those videos. But mm. at the same time, I have to make sure people know that that exists. And it's amazing mm-hmm. how many comments I get going, I don't know why YouTube only recommended this to me now. I've been looking mm. this kind of stuff up for years. And fi- oh, yes. sorry. finally, you ended up on my feed. Right, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there going, well, I've been around for over ten years, right? But yeah, um, yeah, it's you know, yeah, I'm getting so excited. I'm talking with my hands, and I bump my mic, <laughs> forgetting <laughs> just, that I there's just, a microphone in front of my mouth. But I no, dropped my tablet really, earlier. <laughs> you really, you really did tip the scale for me because I've been, uh, you know, a lot of people have been saying, yeah, we. Whenever I post something on Instagram, like yesterday, I posted a bunch of stuff on Instagram too. People were like, oh, thank you for doing that. And as soon mm. as I did all of a sudden people started messaging me I, I was always worried about spreading myself out too thin and trying to mm. trying to keep up with too many different mediums because I, I, I just yeah. have a busy schedule right but yeah um, I think this is you you've made it clear to me that it's very much worth me it's investing what you have to do yeah. yeah at this point it's what we have to do to fight that system yeah um but uh I said the same thing I said my videos are long I have non-stop run-on thoughts about the most abstract how am I supposed to take an hour video and make it into a minute and 30 seconds yeah but I tried it yeah. and I, I brought it down to 15 and I was like there's no way I'm making 15 minutes I did it I did it yeah. I did the most boiling down I could do I cannot possibly boil down anymore and right. I did a second pass and I landed with five minutes and I was like okay it's starting to make sense I can see that I have points, but I still need to bring it down to a minute and 30 seconds. And I uh-huh. did it again. And I realized there's so much filler. Um, but also, uh, there, there's a lot of ums, right? Uh, but yeah. also, there's a lot of pauses. And there's a lot of reiteration. Mm-hmm. But I do, I do have a minute and 30 seconds in there in my video of bullet points. Yeah. And those bullet points are really important. And so if you can find them, you'll start making videos for your reels. And yep. that's what I noticed I was doing. I started making videos that were easy for me to edit in the future where I yep. made the bullet point clear as I discovered it. You know how you and me teach, we teach with the flow. So it, the bullet point, like it, it comes up, the point yep. of the lesson comes up. We start with a general topic, but then the, it sh- reveals itself, the, yep. the great lesson. So yep. I started, as I started discovering the lesson, I started concretely stating it in a five second little sound bite that I knew was easy for me to shorten later. 
and um, it's possible. And honestly, some of your videos, the lesson is right there. You can, it's a minute and 30 seconds is plenty. If yep. you have 10 good points and it takes you five seconds to say them, you can make videos for one minute and 30 seconds, or you can just edit what you have. You can cut randomly and it will still be content. Because did, as yeah. long, yeah, yeah, and it will work. It'll work. People just yeah. want, Instagram is an advertisement for your channel yeah. um, on YouTube. So that's the, yeah. that's what's really working. But also there's uh, honest students there that do learn from the videos, yep. that take notes from the reels that are only a minute and 30 seconds. So you can do it. I mean, if I can do it and my thoughts are all over the place, you are so much more eloquent than I am. And your videos, your videos are not an hour sometimes, they're just 28, like 30 minutes, something like that. You can edit that um, and you have... I believe like you're more organized. You go in with kind of like a, a plan of action. So you ah. may have an easier time. No, <laughs> it's too much. I, it takes me 37 Dude, takes to get it. So go, How do you do it in one take? Dude, that was 40 takes. And and That's like at the first they seem time, so I, was, I was screaming at myself for being so stupid and not getting to the point. Oh my God. Jesus. No uh, way. In, they one feel good so point flawless. takes 20. Well, that's because it, it takes 700 takes. That's why. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no way. I take a, it I take a long, like painful you... route every single. I walk through. I, I I drag myself through a through a field of thorns really? to get to the finish line. Oh God! Every really? time. Really? I Rarely did not do I take see that. Take. Wow! You keep it. You keep yourself like really poised and graceful while doing that. I can't do that. I cannot do multiple takes. I have this one clip where I use um for my end of video, and I I didn't bother editing it, and it's yeah. like. You see the audio. It's just like one burst of audio after the other, and it's yeah. all me cussing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, same here. Same here. Like just like screaming at that. myself for being a complete idiot who can't get to the point. <laughs> Sometimes I, I think that the the real hump for me is the intro. For yeah, like, if I can be candid here. On, oh on my Canvas, god, the intros. The intro, like uh, you know, I'll say that it, and then once I've said it once a certain way, then I'll say that same <laughs> intro seventy-five times the same way because it's kind of how I decided to launch the video, and it just sends yeah. me to the same brick wall every single time, and then I'll I'll stop and I'll say, Adam, 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 get to the goddamn point, and you'll hear it mm. in the audio. Yeah, I'll be cursing yes. at myself to get to the fucking point. <laughs> People don't hear that, you know, YouTubers oh. and people who create content, they don't realize how much you yell at yourself when you're producing that shit. But yes. you get literally pissed off till eventually yes. I, I go from having this 45 minute explanation and I realize, Adam, you didn't even have to say that. Yes. Just say, hi, here's the product, bye. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? But yeah. yeah. But I would not have guessed that. I mean, your latest well, video you. had like two cuts, I think. Um, and it was just all one continuous, really eloquent speech. And I'm like, man, I better not stumble eventually, today. <laughs> eventually, yes. Eventually? Okay. Well, because it's, the, no, but there's a reason why it's one ticket, so it's because I already did that 17 times. <laughs> so I filtered through all the shit, so it sounds like it's one fluid thought. But it's not because I, I know the script. I know my own script by that point. That's crazy, So I've said it so though. many times that it comes out fluidly. And everybody tells me, Adam, just write a goddamn script. And I can't because can't, I, I can't no. read scripts <laughs> genuinely. When I'm when I'm reading yeah. from a script, then my eyes are always looking down. And for me, you know, they're 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 kind of yes. staring at the teleprompter or whatever yeah. it is. I, I can't do that. So for me it's I need to I need to be in my thoughts when I'm doing it. That that's where yes. the flow comes from. Right. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but thank yeah. you. At least it I justifies my, the torture. Yeah. Uh, no, but no, really, they do sound good and they're very easy to edit. And I would I would I would like have such an easy time editing even your last video uh, because you, you're so like um, eventually <laughs> according to you you got to the point and the points are yeah. very clear okay. um so if i can edit mine and I, that was the only take right my live streams right. are only one take um i can edit that down to a minute and 30 i'm 100 percent i'm sure you can do it as well yeah and people will reach it and just make sure your thumbnail is nice and clear it's got art in it um people will click on art more than they click on a picture yeah. of you or something like that and there's yeah. a thousand pictures of people online but they will click on art and they will click on very clear this yeah. is about fear of failure in art and they will click and you'll, your views will skyrocket okay. Um, okay. and it link your YouTube, link all of that. Um, that's what we need to do now to fight right. YouTube. I don't think YouTube is going to budge. I no. think they care more about who's paying them than about who they're paying. They don't give yeah. a damn about us and they, they, they spite us the pennies they give us for the ad clicks. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, that's what we Mr. have Brack. to do. 
I think that's the final. I think that's the final point today because mm-hmm. I know you mm-hmm. you have to start with your student now. I, I yes, yeah, easy. I have five minutes. Yeah, you do. Okay, but the final statement is, "Fuck the system." Fuck the system. <laughs> Fuck the system, Mr. Fuck the system. I heard yeah. you say that the other day, and I went, "Amen, man." I'm behind you with that. Fuck the system. <laughs> yeah, everything we do is is an as a practice of that, from teaching for free to being emotionally vulnerable online. Everything yeah. we do, we're practicing that fuck the system religion. The system. And I think that's the zeitgeist of the time, is that we are all rejecting these norms and we're finding a new way to be people and artists. I, I really agree with that, like fuck the yeah. system all the way. You and I will will arm ourselves with laser guns and fight our <laughs> our robot overlords. <laughs> Yes, we will. (laughs) Thank you so much, Adam, for this wonderful call. (sighs) This was such a joy. It was such a joy talking to you. I I, I feel like I need to take a nap now. I'm emotionally (laughs) spent. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you. Honest to goodness. I'm so glad I had a chance to let everybody know how how dear you are to me publicly. And yeah, and Thank I'm going to leave all the disc- all the info below for for everybody who wants to check it out and support this wonderful creator. And uh, Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and you go and 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 go and spoil your student now. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sounds good. Bye. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.